the first voyage uh, was uh, an epoch-making voyage uh, in the sense that it was the first voyage I can think of that was deliberately there for scientific exploration. Um, Cook himself, theoretically, was responsible simply for, for the sea going part of it. Uh, and there was a young, very wealthy land, young landowner, and he didn't have a title, Joseph Banks, who was a passionate naturalist. He embraced this idea of discovery with enormous gusto and enthusiasm. And it, that echoes throughout um, the whole of that first voyage. And he was, of course, when he got back, a huge celebrity, and he eventually became a great, the great panjandrum of British science. And you couldn't do anything in British science in the 18th century or the second half of it unless you had Joseph Banks' approval, really. It's very salutary to read the accounts of people like Banks and Cook and the Forsters. You can feel that excitement of revelation, of coming across a new facet of creation that you didn't know existed. Uh, the, there's an animal there that, that hops you know, on its hind legs uh, and proceeds in the most extraordinary fashion in a way that nobody's ever seen before. And you can still feel it when you go to Australia as an, as an English naturalist, when, when suddenly you see all these things doing extraordinary things. Uh, and you can get a, just a flavour, just a hint of the excitement that there must have been in someone like Banks who was a great naturalist in European terms, suddenly seeing these amazing variations on subjects that you thought you knew something about. <laughs>